All right, welcome back to the shop. So ITV49, she's been here for a little while. Um, been kind of working on it in between other projects. I did the CV joints, I did the airbags, fixed a lot of stuff on it, fixed a lot of electrical problems that it had, a couple of bad uh, 50 amp breakers that it had. And one thing that it was doing is it kept tripping the, the fuse for the uh, transmission controller. So it would go into fail safe mode. Basically you're just going to second gear. You had a reverse in second gear. They do that so that if something goes wrong, you can still drive the vehicle, you know, get somewhere, you know, get to safety or whatever, get to the shop, get home. But anyway, so in troubleshooting it, I kind of, you can see up here, I've got the dash all apart. Um, you know, I was testing all the wiring, ringing it out to see where the problem was. Uh, it turned out that the problem, you know, as soon as I unhooked the plug here for the transmission, it quit blowing the fuse. So that tells me, okay, the electrical problem is in the transmission. So then I dropped the pan and I unhooked all the solenoids and all the electrical crap in there one thing at a time until i found the one that was presenting the problem um, of course you know you've got all these different sense solenoids and junk in here they're all easy to change you can do them all from the ground just by dropping the pan but there's one that's mounted in the pump and that's only on the 4l70e the 4l60e doesn't have it the 65e doesn't have it this one does and what it is it's a sensor right here and it uh, mounts on the pump, um, so it reads the engine speed, basically. And I unplugged that and the, the problem quit. So then I, I bought a new sensor, I plugged it in just to make sure, yeah, okay, so the new, the, new, the new sensor doesn't trip it. So I knew it wasn't like on the return circuit or something like that. Um, so I had to pull the transmission out, had to pull the pump out, and the, hard, the, the electrical in here is just baked. I mean, it is just cooked. I don't know. It's funny, you know, like it shorted in there and it just burnt the stuff out. The wiring here on this harness is fine. So it didn't affect it here. Very strange, but there was one spot. Let's see, it kind of sits, so it goes in here. It goes in there where it reads off the shaft and it goes in this little metal clip holds it. And that's where it was shorted, it was on that metal clip. Real, real genius engineer who did that. Let's not put a plastic clip or how about no clip? I mean, better than a sharp stamped like spring metal clip and that cut into it and shorted it out and apparently that was enough to burn up the wires and make it go bad so that's a lot of work just to have to fix one sensor but i mean you got to do what you got to do so just in case anybody's curious and you want to see what uh what the girl looks like up underneath here this pickup right here it goes into the bell housing and it reads off the teeth right here on the flex plate that's for the um uh engine rpm for the transmission computer uh, here's the uh, the connector for the transmission. It's got the blue type connector, which is for the 4L70E. It's very specific to it. Um, you know, it's for the uh, output speed sensor. Parking brake cable comes down off of here. Here's where your sh shifter cable and your transfer case cables come down through. And there's a second layer up above here where there's more stuff channeling through there. All the electrical for the comms, the uh, um, antenna cable, stuff like that. Um, you can see going down both sides, you got these double hoses right here and steel tubes. Those are for the fuel tank. Um, they both go, go from the fuel tanks to the fuel switching units. Um, which the fuel switching units, you can see one right there. And then there's one over here on the other side. And those, I guess, uh, they could be quite problematic. I haven't had to change any yet, but I've talked to a couple guys that have. Uh, they're, they're actually really cheap. They're like about 15 bucks. They're a common off the shelf part. Um, I know Ford used them. Um, and I'm sure other companies have used them too. Here's a uh, water drain pitcock, which is kind of a strange place for it um, because when you've got the transmission, the transfer case in here, and you've got the uh, skid plates, that would not be easy to get to. I I'm not sure why that's there, um, be quite honest with you. Let um, me go back here. Here's the muffler for the CTIS system. Uh, some of the ones that have the i cubed update, I believe they moved that up to the top. So actually, here is the valve for the, for the, uh, you know, for the tire inflation system. So also, uh, what run, you know, stuff that runs up in the channel up above here is all this uh, hydro the hydraulic lines for the rear steer. You can see this electrical controlled valve here for it, and then you look back here, you can see this bundle going back, and uh, those all go back to get hydraulic oil from the steering pump to the rear steer unit. Uh, you can see I have the the lock um, the gas cylinders that, that activate the locks. I have them off this one right now. I I just have to put the new ones on. Um, this is the controller right here. This this is an air actuator, and that's what unlocks the rear steer. And then when you 
when the system goes to lock back up, it relieves the air there, and then the, the gas cylinders here push against this arm, and then they control the locks to lock it. And then uh, the other stuff, you have all the switches and sensors here to uh, tell the system when, when it's locked and when it's not locked. So I know some of you have actually commented on my video when I, I was showing, in one of the videos I've shown how my rear steer works. And you know, up here in the dash, up here on the rear steer controller, there's some fault lights. And mine was working even though it had some fault lights flashing. And it's funny because in the, the operator TM, it, it has a chart, you know, so you can look and see how many times it flashes. It, it tells you what the error code is. Uh, it flashes so fast, I can't, I can't see how many times it flashes. I really can't count them. So I really didn't know what it was. It was this sensor here. This is actually a switch right here, and that, that tells the system whether it's locked or not. If it's not fully retracted or fully locked, then it's going to send a, um, you know, information to the steer unit saying that it's, um, you know, what, where it's at, if it's locked or not. And since it wasn't uh, moving correctly, it was indicating an error. So anyways, that's a quick look underneath and just a quick little thing about the transmission. So if you do have a problem with the transmission, I mean, that's always something to look for. Um, there's so many different things that could be wrong. Um, this one here, it, it turned out to be easy to diagnose, but just really hard to, uh, you know, a hard issue to fix. Um, kind of a pain in the butt. It's going to be like two full days of work on this stupid thing. And, of course, my shop is just a mess. I got done with the C15 a little while ago. I've got all these parts laying around here. There's an the oil pan. got the turbo. Engine oil pump. All this stuff laying here. i got to get all this stuff cleaned up. So I'm kind of like crowded out of my shop right now. i got so many projects going on in here. And uh, plus, you know, just all my tools and all the stuff laying around from pulling this transmission out. So, but anyways, um, thanks for watching. Um, if you liked the video, please hit the like button. Um, if you have anybody that you think that would like it, please share with them. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And thank you for watching.